Sugar Bunny. Hey there, Sugar Bunnies. Today I'll be opening an LOL Surprise Series 3 Confetti Pop Big Sister Ball. Then I'll be taking the doll that we get and customizing it. Today's custom will be Jojo Siwa. If you don't want to watch the ball opening and want to jump ahead in the video to the custom, hop on over to a little over 5 minutes into the video. So let's get started. Here's our ball. These balls have 9 surprises. First zipper. This one's hard to even get started. All right then, from the bottom. And our first surprise is our secret message. Here it is. Did you solve it? It's sun-kissed. Second zipper. Our second surprise is our collectible stickers. Will our doll color change, spit, tinkle, cry, or have a mystery feature? Third zipper. I had to peel every layer on this ball. So here's our third surprise. It's a ring tattoo. This one looks like it belongs to a mermaid. So here's the instructions for what to do next. Number one, start here. Number two, open. Number three, close, spin, and repeat. Number four, find ribbon. Number five, flip it over. Number six, pull and pop. So here's the first place to open. And our first bag has our outfit. It's a little white two-piece polka dot bathing suit. I'm gonna take this sticker off. Okay, now we close, spin, and repeat. Second opening. The second bag has our accessory. It's a pair of little black sunglasses. Close, spin, and repeat. And our third bag has our shoes. It's a pair of white strappy sandals. It's not spinning. Oh, I forgot to close it. Now it is. So our fourth bag has our bottle. It's a little black and white mason jar. So now we need to find the ribbon. Here it is, I see it in this one. Okay, let's pull it out. It's really cute. They made it look like a zipper with a little pull tab on the end. Okay, I'm gonna get better situated so I can flip it over and then pull and pop. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's do that again. One more time. So here's what the inside looks like. You push it in to reset it and then you can pop it again. So inside there was a checklist. And instructions. Some more confetti. And here's how the top looks. And have a look at this. This is our handle. It opens like a zipper. And finally, here's our doll. And it looks like I got a gymnast. Just kidding, but she is doing the split. All right, so here's our doll. I can already see something on her body, so I think I know what club she belongs to and what her water feature will be. But let's get her dressed, get her checklist, and find out who she is. Here it is, and I found our big sister down here in the swim club. So we got Vacay Bebe. She is a popular. And she will color change and what else? <gasps> we'll find out. So I can tell that her water change feature is on her body, so I've already taken off her bathing suit. It took a while for it to get dark, so I've sped it up for you. But you can see that her hair got dark, just like ours does when it gets wet. And because she's probably been in the water, her mascara you can see is running. She also has on a little black two-piece bathing suit. Then she's accented with a body chain and some bracelets. She really looks like she spent the day in the water. Let's feed her and find out what else she does. I've already filled up her bottle. All right, she spits. 
Watch out! Okay, so she color changes and spits. Now we can put our stickers on. One for the color change, and one for spitting. All right, it's custom time. I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. We're gonna customize Bay K Baby to look like Jojo Siwa. As always, before you change your doll, make sure you have an adult's permission. So the first thing I'll be changing is her hair. Since Jojo has her hair in a ponytail, I'll need the majority of her hair flat against her head, which means these cute little braided buns will have to go. For this custom, I will be cutting the doll's hair. Once again, do not do this without an adult's permission. So I've got my doll and I'm bringing the scissors out. Those buns are going bye-bye. Just get as close to the head as you can without cutting off too much. There was some water left in there. So here's what it looks like after my first cut. There's some more water in there. Okay, on to the second one. That one was a lot easier and it went flying. And there you go, they're both cut pretty evenly. Now don't throw these away. I'm sure I can find a use for them in another project. They kind of look like yarn balls. They could be for a little kitty. We just have to fix them up a bit. Time to fill in those holes. For this part, you'll need an adult's help. I'll be using a hot glue gun. Now we're not going to completely fill in the doll's head with glue. I'm going to go around the edge and then I'll go around the center. There should be no hole. And now the other side. The way I did this one will actually work better. Just go once around the outside edge and let it dry. You can always speed up the drying process by dipping it in cold water. I'm gonna go back to the first one I did and do another layer around its outside edge. This will help to secure it in place. Now I'm gonna go back to the other side and finish filling in the hole. The way I'm filling in the holes will create a watertight seal and still allow you to use the doll's water feature. So Jojo Siwa doesn't have freckles, we're going to be removing those and a few other things on the doll's face. I'll be doing this with a Q-tip and nail polish remover. It takes a while, so keep on it. If you're still having trouble, a magic eraser dipped in nail polish remover works really well. Alright guys, the next part's kind of scary, so brace yourselves! Alright, are you guys ready? Here she comes! Ah, what happened to everything? I'll fix it, I promise. So the holes filled in nicely, and the seals are intact. The water feature still works. Now I'm going to build up the hair. I'm going to add a layer of hot glue all around the head. I'll line all the edges and then fill in the center. You don't need to go over the top of where you filled in the holes. That's already at the level that you'll be having the rest of your hair. When I go around the edges on the front, I'll be going over the top of the curls. Once you have all the edges done, keep filling in the hair until it's complete. This next part is optional, but if you choose to do it, an adult will need to do it. I'll be using a wood burning tool to make texture in the doll's hair. Start from the edges and work your way in toward the center. There should be a spot on the head where you've already decided that you're going to place her ponytail. You should make all the hair texture drag to this location. It will give the texture a more natural appearance and appear as if the hair is really being pulled into a ponytail. Another way to make texture without using this tool is to let the glue dry partially and press a toothpick into it. The top should have a dry layer so your glue isn't sticking to your toothpick. It won't be as detailed and you'll have to work quick, but you can do it. And as you can see, the hair has a really nice realistic look to it. 
I've already made the ponytail and textured it. To keep the video moving along, I've put how I did it at the end. To see it, you can either watch through or look down in the description box below and I'll put the time where you can go to. So I've got my doll and I'm just going to double check the place where I've decided to put my ponytail. Looks great! Now I'm going to paint the hair. I'll have to make the color first. I'm using acrylic paint. I'll be mixing this yellow, vanilla, and I'll also be using sun-kissed peach. This is really to preference, but I'll be starting with yellow, and I'll do equal parts of the yellow with the vanilla, and then just a little bit of the sun-kissed peach. Then mix them all together. It turned out a perfect color. I like to start by carefully painting around all the edges. Now I'm going to fill in the rest. I'm going to leave the spot where I'll put her ponytail unpainted. This will take a few coats of paint. Now I'm going to paint her ponytail. The part that I'll attach to her head, I will leave unpainted as well. This will also take a few coats of paint. Here's the second coat of paint being applied to the head. So I'm done painting a few layers on both my hair and ponytail, and this is how it looks. I'm going to check one more time to make sure I know where I want my ponytail. Then I'm going to attach it. I'll put glue on the doll's head as well as the ponytail to help attach them. Be sure to hold it in place until it's cooled enough to where it won't move. Now you can finish painting her head and ponytail. Next I'm going to redo her eyes. I'll start with the white outer edge. Jojo's eyes are green, so I'll be using this Ocean Breeze color for it. First, I'll do a dark outer layer of green, then I'll do a lighter inner layer. To make that lighter color, I'll be using the same green with a little bit of white. Now I'm going to fix the pupils of her eyes. Now her eyeliner. Time to put a sparkle in her eye. Now that it's dry, we're going to seal it in and make it shine with a layer of clear nail polish. Do this to both eyes. Time to paint on the eyebrows. I'll be using the same color that I did for her hair.
When those are dry, we'll seal them in with clear nail polish as well. Now I'll paint on her lipstick. For this, I'll use a light pink color. When this is dry, I'll seal it in with clear polish as well. Now I'll seal in the hair. I'll use clear polish for this as well. I like to start around the edges and do those first. Then I'll come back and fill in all the rest. I'm gonna give her some earrings. For this, I'll use one piece of glitter on each ear. To attach these, I'll be using gel super glue. I like to use the gel over the liquid because it doesn't run. Last thing for the head is to add on the classic Jojo bow. I've also put how I made this in the end of the video. The time to go see it will also be in the description box below. I'll be putting this on with the gel super glue, but you can use hot glue gun too. And here it is. Time to decorate some clothes. In my last custom, I showed you how to make some. In this one, I'll only be making a skirt. For the shirt and shoes, I'll be using the ones from Troublemaker here. She's wearing a perfect shirt and vest combination, and her shoes and socks will make perfect high tops. I'll start with the shirt. I'll be painting the undershirt light pink, and then I'll paint the vest a blue. I'll mix these two colors to get my light pink. For the denim vest, I'll make it a medium blue color. To make that, I'll mix this blue with a little bit of white. I'm going to leave it partially mixed to give it a neat kind of worn denim look. Now I'm going to paint on five silver buttons. I've made some gray paint by mixing black and white. When it's all dry, I'll seal it in with clear polish. Now I'm going to put on these two little bows I've made. I've shown how I made these in the end as well with a time down in the description box to skip to. I'll be attaching these to the shirt with the gel super glue as well. And here's the final product. On to the skirt. How to make this is at the end and the time to skip to is down below in the description. I'm going to paint this a few coats of dark pink before I add glitter to it. My skirt is dry and now I'm going to add on some dark pink glitter. I put this together to help me hold the skirt while I work. To apply this, I'll put on a clear coat of nail polish and then sprinkle the glitter on. Now I'm going to do the bottom edge. I have some glitter from when I was sprinkling it on that I'll be dipping it in. And our skirt is done. Time for the shoes. I'll be turning these into high tops. They're just a little bit too tall right now, so I'm gonna cut off a little bit of it with some scissors. And then again to the other one. I'm going to put a few coats of pink paint on them before I put glitter on them. I won't be painting the front though where it's white, I'll be leaving that the way it is. Do both shoes like this.
The shoes are dried with a few layers of paint and now it's time to add some glitter. I'll be using dark pink for these as well. I'll use the same method to apply the glitter to these too. I'll add a clear coat of nail polish and then dip them. Don't put any polish on the front white part. You want to leave that part unglittered. And the other shoe. And these are our finished shoes. I also made her a little microphone that she can actually hold. How to make this at the end and time to skip to down below. I'm going to paint the bottom part of the microphone with a few coats of light pink. Next, I'm going to cover the top in dark pink sparkles. I'll use the same method to apply this. Put on a clear coat of polish and then dip. Last, seal in the bottom half with a coat of clear polish. And you're done! Last, I'm going to decorate the bottle. I've drawn her name and logo on the side in pencil. Now I'll trace over it with a dark pink paint. Now I'm going to cover the top with a light pink glitter. Put on a coat of clear nail polish and then dip it. Be careful to only get the polish on the lid portion. You can see a little extra on the side there, but it's not stuck on. I'll just brush it off. Now I'll be adding this star gem to the inside of her heart logo. I'll be attaching it with the gel super glue. I also have this cute little bow I'm going to add on. I'm also using the gel super glue to attach this as well. And here's our completed bottle. I've already added the clear nail polish as a sealer on the areas that I've painted. Alright, are you guys ready? It's time for the reveal! Here she is, Miss Jojo Siwa. I think she turned out really nicely. She even has her little microphone you can take off. And when you put it back on, it can stay without falling off. She's also wearing her classic Jojo bow. I really like the little bows on her vest. I think they are the cutest things. I also really like the glitter skirt and her glitter high tops. And what LOL doll would be complete without their bottle? It matches her perfectly. If you guys decide to do a custom, I'd love to see it. Hashtag Sugar Bunny Customs. Alright guys, now I'll show you how to make her ponytail, the bow for her hair, the bows for her vest, her skirt, and her microphone. For the bows on her vest and her ponytail, you'll need a piece of wax paper, some canola oil, vegetable oil, or cooking spray, and a paper towel. Lay down the wax paper and coat two small areas with the oil. Next, you'll need your hot glue gun. For the bows on her vest, make two small, thin circles about the size of a dime. I've drawn out the approximate dimensions for the hair. I'll place it under the wax paper as a kind of guide while I'm placing my glue. This does not have to be exact, just anything near this size will be good. Make sure you put it under an area that you've put some oil on. Get your hot glue gun once again and trace and fill in the ponytail shape. Let's go back to our two circles. They've dried and now we can peel them off. They should come off fairly easy as long as you place the glue over an oiled area. If not, you can always run them under the water to get the excess paper off. Now you'll need some scissors. We're going to cut this into a rectangular shape. After that, we're going to cut it into a bow. You're going to do this to both pieces, so try to make them as even as you can. Now we're going to decorate our bow using some light pink glitter. For this, I found it easier to do half of it at a time. Let it dry before you do the other side though. Just coat it in nail polish and then you're going to dip it in the glitter. Now that it's dry, I'll do the same to the other half. 
You don't need to do the other side of the bow. That part will be attached to the outfit. Do the same thing to both bows and they're done. Now back to the ponytail. Our first layer has dried and we're ready to put on the second. Basically what you'll be doing is a bunch of layers and each layer will be getting smaller than the last one. Make sure to let them cool down and dry between layers. After about five layers, and once that last one's dry, I'm gonna take it off the wax paper. Again, this should come off easily, but if it doesn't, you can always run it under the water and get the remaining paper off. Tips for having this work good? Oil well and peel slowly. Here you can see all the layers and how they get smaller each time you go down. Now I'm going to set my piece back down and layer it just like I did on the other side. When your last layer is dry, it's all done. Here you can see all the layers. Time to make the bow for her head. You'll need a piece of ribbon about five inches long. Find the halfway point and then glue the two ends to that point. I use my hot glue gun. Place the dab of glue in the center on the side that shows the two ends coming together. Then fold it in half lengthwise. Hold it together until the glue is secure and has set. When it has, you're going to take your bow and flip it over. Now take the ribbon from the top and the bottom and fold them up as shown. You're going to secure them there with a small dab of glue in the crease for each, just like I'm doing. Then hold it again until the glue is secure and has set. Now to make the center part of the bow, you'll need a two inch piece of ribbon. Cut that piece in half lengthwise, lay that piece down and fold in and glue as shown. Time to finish up your bow. We're going to take the piece we just made and secure it to the other piece. Put a dab of hot glue in the center. Now place the middle of the strip on the bow as shown. Wait for it to become secure before proceeding. Flip the bow over and apply glue as shown. Fold the strip onto the glue on both the top and bottom. Hold in place until secure. As you can see, I do not like the little glue strings, so I remove those. Now you should have a good idea of how much of the strip you'll need to finish the back of your bow. Cut off the excess. Glue and fold down those two remaining pieces. Once again, hold these in place until they're secure. Our bow is almost done. We have one finishing touch. I'll be putting one piece of glitter in the bottom left corner of the bow to signify JoJo's brand logo. I'll attach it to the bow using the gel super glue. And here's our finished bow. To make the skirt, you'll need to start with the doll's body and some clay. You're going to start by wrapping clay around the bottom half of the body, more specifically the legs. Keep your clay at the same height all the way around. Don't go any higher than the lowest part of the doll's body. This is important. In order for the skirt to work right and stay on the doll, the lower part of the doll's stomach and the doll's bottom must be exposed. If you don't do this correctly, your skirt will probably fall off and you'll have to try again. You can see where I'm putting my clay to, and that's the perfect height. Press the clay down just like I'm doing. It should be just a little bit bigger than the legs and not stick out very much. Continue to work your clay, making it look like mine. The extra clay near the feet of the doll doesn't need to be duplicated and has no effect on the skirt. Yours should look very similar to this at this point. I've made a small roll of clay and I'll be attaching that next. 
Put the roll on the height of about where your doll's knees are. Wrap it all the way around and remove the excess. Now I'm going to squish and pinch the top part of the roll of clay so that the clay is angled toward the doll's body. Here's a side view so you can understand what I mean. The bottom part of the roll of clay should still be flared out. This will be forming the bottom edge of our skirt. Do this around the whole roll. When you're done, it should look something like this. It's time for our hot glue gun. I'll be putting the glue to the height of her belly button and the same height all the way around the doll. Then I'll keep applying glue all the way down to the bottom edge of the ring of clay. If it happens to go over, don't worry, we can fix that later. Make sure there are no holes or gaps and everything is completely filled in. Here's what it should look like. Now we're going to let this dry and harden. Our glue is dried and hardened and now it's safe to take our skirt off. I found that squishing it back and forth helps remove it from the clay. Keep working on it, pulling out bits and pieces of clay as you go. Now I'm going to pull the skirt away from the body. It will resist a little, but it should come off fairly easy. If it's giving you difficulty in one area, try working at another. Pinching and squeezing while pulling down ultimately work. And here's our skirt, but it's not done yet and we need to clean it up. Remove as much clay as you can and then go wash it. I found that warm water works best along with the help of a nail scrubber or an old toothbrush. Do the same for your doll's body as well. Here's our skirt and doll all cleaned up. Now's the time to test and make sure our skirt works. You should be able to tell which side is the back because it'll have the little indentions from her bottom. And it's a success. The skirt fits snugly to my doll's body and doesn't slide down or fall off. Now we can take it off and touch up the edges. I'm going to make the top and bottom edge more flat and less round and bumpy. I'll be using the metal side to the tip of my hot glue gun for this. If your glue gun doesn't have this type of tip, or if you prefer, you can use scissors for this part. I'm just flattening down and taking away the bumpy edges on the top and bottom. Don't take away too much, especially near the top, because that's the part that's holding onto your doll and keeping your skirt up. And here's my completed skirt. Time to make her microphone. For this, I'll just need my doll and my hot glue gun. I'm going to apply a small amount of glue around her hand, leaving her thumb out as best I can. If it happens to get in there, it's probably fine. It just may be a little harder to wiggle on your microphone. Once you've done that, let the glue dry. Now apply another layer of glue on the top and bottom of her hand. We're building up the handle of her microphone. Allow this to dry as well. And again. Now to make the top part of her microphone. Make a ball shaped piece of glue. Let that dry. Now it's time to finish up our microphone. We'll put one last layer of glue around the top of the microphone. This should help in making more of a ball shape. It should be a little wider all the way around than your handle. Then let it dry. The glue is dried. Let's take it off and make sure it works. Carefully wiggle it off of the hand. It fits and it stays. Another success. And that's it, guys. Thank you all for joining me and watching me make my JoJo Siwa custom. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for the long length on my customs. I just like to be as detailed as possible and show you guys everything I'm doing, so if you want to make one, you can. 
And if you ever have any questions on how I did something, just send me a message. Let me know in the comments down below who you'd like to see me make a custom of. Bye everyone, I'll see you soon. Become a sugar bunny, subscribe, check out my other videos, like, comment, and remember sugar bunnies, stay sweet.